Tired of the everyday routine? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you... Escape! Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Escape, brought to you by your Richfield gasoline dealer and the Richfield Oil Corporation of New York. Marketers of Richfield gasolines, motor oils, and other petroleum products. Look for the Richfield Eagle on the cream and blue pumps. Tonight, we escape to Berlin and the story of an occupation GI trying desperately to break through a web of death that is being spun around him, as Morton Fine and David Friedkin tell it in their exciting story, Pass to Berlin. Greta was laughing. For me, there was no joy in it anymore. I looked through the window at Berlin, spread out like a half-buried skeleton. Berlin after a war, shock-carved in jagged concrete, and reflected in the window, Greta. Greta standing behind me with a drink in her hand. Oh, Schatz. Oh, Liebchen. Oh, drink your drink. Oh, drink with me. Soldier boy. No, no, forget it, Greta, will you? Oh, such a pretty name. Ed Sawyer. Such a handsome face. But such a frown. Now, oh, come, come. Make Greta laugh. It's all Greta wants. To laugh a little. <laughs> to forget her loneliness. Sure, sure. Laugh and forget, just the two of us. Me and Greta, and let the rest of the world go by. Well, you made your loneliness, baby. You and Hitler. Oh, you... <laughs> I'm funny, huh? I'm a real <laughs> funny man, huh? Oh, great. I should have met you a long time ago. Great, I likes you, soldier boy. Well, nurse a broken heart, kid, because I'm leaving. Like that? Leaving? Great, I remember when you said love to her. Yeah, I remember too. Only now I remember why I'm in Berlin wearing a soldier suit. American. American is a swine. Uh-uh. Candy bar, American soldier. The conqueror from the cigarette democracy. I just dream it, kid. Dream your dream about how an American soldier was once nice to you. Right now, that's all. Wait. What? Oh, wait a minute. Come on, Greta. Get out of my way, will you? Oh, Greta is sorry. See? Look. Look, look, Greta is sorry. She's sorry. Please, don't go. Well, the mood moves you real fast, kid. All right, so now you're sorry. Oh, kiss me, big soldier boy. Handsome soldier Come boy. On, I said out of my way. Oh, dirty American, you drag swine, thou carol swine hound, you murderer of my country, you democracy weakly. Hey, Wait. hey, oh, I could kill you. Kill you, kill you. Listen, I said get out of my way. Take me, take you. Get out of my way. Take this off. No, no. Get. No, no don't. <laughs> For a second, I stared where she'd fallen motionless. Her head lay against the lead piping in the wash basin. I watched a small pearl of blood squeeze through her lips. Then it died, too. Then I remembered fingerprints. I, I'd i handled two things in that room, Greta and the highball glass. I smashed it to the floor and ground it with my heel. Outside, it was raining. That was a break. Because the rain had washed away the human rubbish that litters the Berlin pavements at night, and no one saw me leave the house. I walked, turned some corners, walked some more. Then a splash of neon smeared across the wet pavement, I looked up. A theater. A theater for the amusement of G.I.s and the rehabilitated natives. I bought a ticket and went inside and found a seat. Ladies and gentlemen, the headline attraction of the evening, the most astounding mind-reading act of the century. Direct from London, 
the great Stanley and his lovely assistant, Mona. Mona, who sees all, knows all, and tells all. Ladies and gentlemen, there are those among you who will disbelieve what you are about to witness. To these, I say only wait. Yes! <laughs> Descend among you, walk down the aisle, and here I ask one of the audience for some small object whose description is known only to himself. Take me, take me. Uh, do you have such an object, sir? Yeah. Yeah, I got some. You call that something? Ah, uh, yeah. your barracks, man, you guys. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Here, give me a reading. Thank you. Thank you. Mona? I listen, Stanley. What is it that I hold in my hand? It is, it is something that has come from far away. An envelope, postmarked Vincennes, Indiana. Yes, Correct. Right. An envelope, postmarked Vincennes, Indiana. Mona? I listen, Stanley. What precious thing do I hold in my hand now, Mona? Stanley. Reach into the spaces beyond space and tell me, what do I hold in my hand? A locket. Yeah, yeah, that is right, a locket. <laughs> a golden locket, and inside there is a strand of golden hair, a child. Yeah, that is the heart for my name, King. Now, as a sober. Oh, they were good, the great Stanley and Mona. Slick, poised, and professional. Two glittering phonies who knew the score, and they kept it up. Mona! I listen. Do not lose your concentration. Now, identify this object. Stanley? You must, Mona. You must. There's darkness here. Only darkness. Oh, come on, come on, look, come on. Something stands in the way. There's a murderer here. What? What? A murderer. A murderer. They rang down the curtain and I sat there until the next act came on. Sat there and knew there was no way anyone could have guessed about Greta. No way. It was just a cheap, rotten, dramatic trick to suck the audience in and it had worked. Oh, some of the audience was laughing. Others were obviously affected by it. Moronic idiots with their mouths open and their eyes uneasy. And me? Well, maybe I was being naive, ridiculous, but I had to find out. I waited until the audience began to give attention to a tired, blonde singer. There was a door to the left of the orchestra pit that led backstage. I slipped from my seat and headed for it like it was my business. I walked down a corridor. There were cells on each side tagged with performers' names. Mona's door had a star on it. The star was gilt, and the gilt was peeling. One moment. Yes? She was taller than I thought. Her face was delicate with an almost wistful expression, but it was her eyes. Gray and soft as if the color had been strained through gauze. Yes? What is it? I came back to congratulate you on your performance, Mona. That's quite an act. That's real big time. Thank you. Only, only you're phony. You are. Please go away. It's real phony, isn't it? You're a man whose words are like acid in the hands of a child. If you do not scar yourself, you will scar others. I do not wish to speak with you. No, you're not even English. Oh, no, don't close the door on me. Please. Yeah, that's better. You're not English, huh? Are you American? Come on, where are you from, honey? Now, you know, you you got a fair act there. That, that guy who calls himself the Great Stanley. It was not an act. Oh, then... Well, then, why did you say there was a murderer in the audience? I don't know why. Well, then you were kidding. I felt his presence. There was a murderer. You... you still feel it? Yes. Mona, there's a cab waiting to take us to the hotel. And a... Hi, oh. Stanley. Good evening, Sergeant. This gentleman knocked on my door. Well, I'm glad he did. It's always a pleasure to meet a soldier. A medical corps man by your shoulder patch, I see. Welcome. Oh, thanks. Would you wait for me in the cab, Mona? I'll only be a moment. Do not be long. I need you with me. 
You swore the extraordinary performance, Sergeant... Uh, um, Sawyer, Ed Sawyer. Oh, I consider it an honor that you should take time to come backstage and express your appreciation. <laughs> uh, that a hard-bitten G.I. should become a convert to Mona's miraculous powers. Are you kidding me, or, or am I kidding you? No, 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 no. We don't have to kid each other, do we? We fellow sophisticates, hmm? However, the others out there, well, perhaps they were fooled. It's amusing to kid them, and also, one lives this way. Well, you and Mona should check on each other. She tried to make me believe your act was on the level. Well, Mona is my wife, and she's loyal to the illusions that I create about her. Ah. Uh, well, then that murderer bit was phony. Oh, naturally, but effective, don't you think? Yeah. How did you think of it? Oh, an inspiration, Sergeant... Uh, a Sawyer. A Sawyer. An act such as ours needs one piece of sensationalism to shock a new audience, and we have it, don't you think? Yeah, you got it. Oh, uh, just one thing, Stanley. Of course. Tell Mona something for me, will you? Of course. Tell her her eyes are the most beautiful I've ever seen. Oh, she will be pleased. She's blind, you know. His smile held, and the smile was phony like their act was phony. I knew now I had nothing to worry about, so I left. I went back to my room in the Garmisch Hotel, stood on the balcony for a while, watching the fingers of light from Tempelhof play against the sky, lighting it up fitfully, disappearing. And far away, silhouetted the hulk of some broken building was caught now in the beacon and then lost. I watched it stared, and then I saw it. The outlines of some structures blasted by bombs, but it's like a scaffold, a, a gallows. Precisely that. And something else, a figure detached itself from the shadows, a figure of a man scavenging among the rubble of the torn buildings, and he stopped and over his head the gallows. The man and the gallows caught against the night. I went to bed, closed my mind to all of it. Toward morning, I had a dream. I dreamt I was standing in a stone yard, and I was watching some men, some blind men, and they were building a scaffold. Then I was awake, and I jumped out of bed. I saw what the hammering had been. Nailed to my door was a shroud, a shroud for a dead man, and pinned to it under a single white carnation, a small white envelope. Adlon Flores, it said, and on the other side, some writing memory of Ed Sawyer, it said. Thou art cursed because thou hast killed. What does the word xylene mean? To a scientist, the word xylene means a super-octane gasoline component, one of the highest octane gasoline components ever discovered. To a motorist using Ridgefield gasoline, xylene means new flashing power on the toughest highway grind. Xylene means new high antinoc that gives you a quiet running motor and new lightning acceleration to snap you out ahead in busy traffic. Why? Because today, every gallon of Ridgefield gasoline contains xylene. What's more, your Ridgefield dealer offers you a choice of two great Ridgefield gasolines with xylene. Select Richfield Ethel for best results in highest compression motors. Or Richfield High Octane at regular price for the average car. Each contains xylene. Each is a champion in its class. Stop where you see the Richfield Eagle on the cream and blue pumps. Get Richfield High Octane or Richfield Ethyl Gasoline containing xylene. One of the highest octane components ever discovered. And now, we return you to... Escape! Good morgen. I may do something for you, Sergeant? Yes, you can. You're fortunate, Sergeant. Just this morning, just arrived this morning, fresh-cut camellias, flown in from Italy. No, they no, no flowers. A shroud. Talk to me about a shroud. A shroud? My heartfelt condolences, Sergeant. A shroud, of course. If you'll come this A shroud way... that was delivered to the Garmisch Hotel, room 312, this morning from your shop. Yeah, yeah, na naturally. I, I remember such an order. I, I pray it met the requirements. I'm crazy about it. Why was it nailed on my door? Why? I I, I do not understand. I didn't order it. Who did? Why, I, 
early this morning, Sergeant, early this morning by special post, in order for a shroud and a wreath, with instructions for their disposition. Who wrote the order? Who gave these instructions? That I do not know, Sergeant. It was a typewritten, unsigned, and more than a sufficient amount of American money to take care of everything. I thought somebody who wished to remain anonymous... Well, here's some more American money. Oh. Now tell your boy to tear that thing off my door. Yeah, but Sergeant... Tell him, florist! Yeah. I left him there. Nobody knew why I'd killed her. Nobody. I went back to the hotel to think about it some more, to try and think it away. <laughs> I made myself to home, kid. I knew you wanted to see me. You wore a derby hat and a tight overcoat with a moth-eaten fur collar. Cheeks ruddy, eyes red-rimmed, and a replica of his nose could have been bought in a carnival supply house. Oh, jolly, a jolly fat punk with a mission. Hey, sit down, kid. Take a load off of brain. The man is here who will take care of everything, just like the corpse that died in the good old USA. Who are you, and what do you want? Here, yeah, take one. That's my card. I can see it from here. It's real pretty. Now, what does it say on it? Uh, Joseph Scarn, it says. That's my name. Mortician, it says. That's my business. That's what? Oh, uh, yeah. Puzzles you, huh, kid? I just got to tell you about Joe Scarn. That'll explain me to you. Yeah, do that, will you? Yeah. Well, uh, see, back in the States before the war, this was my career, mortician. That's funeral director. Uh, then they demobilized me right here in Berlin. Now, this is the break I've been waiting for all my life. Where better to pursue the career mortician than right here in good old Berlin? Come on, come I, on, get up. Uh, come on, now, get out of here, will you? Don't come rush on, get me, out. kid. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make the final arrangements for the funeral. Funeral? What funeral? Nobody's dead. Nobody's even feeling bad. Well, this overjoys me tremendously, son, but look, about the cast. Look, look, this is a joke, isn't it? A gag? Isn't that what it is? Something the boys who came on past with me cooked up? That's it, isn't it? Come on! They, they send you here. That's, that's it, isn't it? Come on, will you talk? Talk to me! Take your hands off me, soldier boy. You got the hysteria. Come on, who sent you here? Come on! A, a letter. A letter this morning with money and instructions. Typewritten, no signature. Oh, you peek. Come on, tell yes, me! Yes, yes, that's right. It said come to this hotel room and make arrangements to receive the body. Who, whose body? Well, the letter said the body of Ed Sawyer, Sergeant, Army of the United States. It said Ed Sawyer was about to die. It said he was going to be executed for murder. All of a sudden, there were no more words. His jaws were moving, but there was no sound. Even when the folds of his fat face moved into a chuckle, I got nothing. He was out of focus, all blurry. I ran past him and out onto the street. It took me an hour to push my way through Berlin's derelict, scarred alleys to Greta's rooming house. If someone in that house recognized me as a murderer, I would know it. No matter how he tried to hide it, I would know it. Face him. Face him and take it from there. That was what I had to do with... Bitte? Uh... Was wollen Sie? Uh, have you ever seen me before? <laughs> Bitte? Well, don't kid me, all you crouch, no English when you need it. Now, have you ever seen me before? Come on, talk, will you? Lass dich los! Come on! Heinrich, Heinrich! Come on, be schnell! Der Soldat will etwas wissen. Ja. Oh, what you want, Sergeant? Well, that's better. Our papers are in order. Everything in our house is as you Americans have ordered it. Wait, I was well, sure. Don't, don't fret yourself, Dad. It's yeah. just that I have a feeling I've been to this house before and I've got to find out. <laughs> is this some kind of a drunken joke you're playing with us? Just tell me if you've ever seen me before. Ah, oh, you are sick. Please go away from us. Yes, please. that's right. I'm sick. It, it happens like this lots of times. I, I, amnesia. You know, it's the war, but... Now, look at me, look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you're sure you've never seen me before? Yeah, we, we are sure, Sergeant. Yeah. <laughs> come and sit down. No, no, wait a minute, will you come and sit? Yeah. Your other guest. Yeah. Could I see them? But, uh, what is the need, Sergeant? One has been drunk for three days. Yeah. He will stay drunk for three days more. Yeah. Another Elsa and I have not seen for a week. Nine. And the third is in the morgue. This morning she was taken there, dead. Yeah, yeah, tot. Ah, ah, that Greta. Always she gave us trouble. Yeah, Elsie, yeah? yeah? Please, doctors, questions. Oh, all right, all right, I'm coming. 
Yeah. Sergeant Sawyer. Sergeant Edward Sawyer. Yeah. This is Stanley speaking. The great Stanley. Oh. Will you do me the honor to meet me at 11.30 tonight in the tear garden in the Seeker's Alley? The statue of Frederick the Great would be a charming spot. Well, charm me over the phone, Stanley. I don't like the cold night air. Can be helpful. Bring penicillin with you. Bring what? Penicillin. They're so desperate for it here in Berlin, they pay fabulous wads of money for it on the black market. Bring all you can. And later, as I ask you for it, you'll bring more. Now, look, we... For an American soldier in the medical corps, it's so easy. You gone crazy, Stanley? Oh, oh, my dear Sergeant, a murderer. A murderer does not question another's sanity. To him, all other beings are insane. Haven't you found it so? How would I know about murderers? Ask Greater. Greater? How did you find out about her? Uh -huh. You told me, my dear boy, when you were so curious about a murderer after the performance. You told me when you permitted the grisly humors of the shroud and casket to force you to revisit the scene of death. You followed me. Yes, of course I followed you. Each of your flights of terror was more and more promising. And when you went to the rooming house, I made inquiries. They told me of the lonely girl who'd been murdered. They were very accommodating. You're still there, Sergeant. Yes, yes, I, I'm still here. But then I can expect you then at 11.30. It'll give me time to change after the performance. Sure. Sure, 11.30. I'll be glad to do you the honor, Stanley. <laughs> Oh, he made it easy. For nothing, he'd let me know who it was I had to be afraid of. Stanley. The great Stanley. And Mona, with the pale, lovely, blind eyes. Boy, what an act they had. I wondered how many times their sensational finish had paid off like this. How many murderers had handed themselves over to Stanley and Mona on a platter for nothing. But I could change all that. I could get off the hook real cheap. I could fix it so Mona and the great Stanley would let me rest in peace for nothing. Uh, no, not for nothing, just the price of an admission ticket. There were about 30 people in the theater, most of them soldiers. The opening act was on when I got there and slid into a seat. A family of French jugglers whirling shiny hoops on every loose piece of anatomy on the stage. Stanley and Mona were next to closing, so I figured I had about an hour. I waited until the French were balancing everything but the proscenium, and then when they had everything in the air, I used the same orchestra entrance to backstage. The door to Mona's dressing room was open. The room was dark. I eased inside just as the next act came hurrying down the corridor, still hooking up their costumes. I brushed against a moldy curtain that hung from wooden rings. I pulled it back, hid behind it, and waited. Still, I cannot understand why you must leave me tonight, Stanley. What is so important at 11.30? Through the dim light of the corridor, I saw Mona walk into the room and sit down at her dressing table. Stanley was right behind. He was reaching for the light switch when my hands found his mouth and his throat, and I began to strangle him. <laughs> my fingers dug into his flesh, and I crushed his breath back into him. He made no sound. There was, there was only the soft laughter that seeped through the theater in his soft throat in my hands. And then Mona's soft voice. Why do you not answer, Stanley? Is it a rendezvous? Stanley? Stanley, what is it? Why are you so silent? Stanley? Stanley! Suddenly her fingers were on my face, frightened and quick like the wings of a wounded bird. Then slowly they began to search the empty air for the dead Stanley. She turned and her blind eyes stared right at me and I brushed her aside and ran down the corridor. An old doorman sat reading a newspaper at the stage door couldn't get out that way without his seeing me. Only one way, back through the theater. I started up the aisle, and then I knew I was doing the wrong thing. There was an MP at the head of the aisle, a corporal from the MPs, the braid, the white spats, and the club. In this tiny audience, if I left in the middle of the act, he'd remember me. So I sat down in the row that was the most fair. When I looked back at the end of the act, there were other MPs standing at each exit. Then the curtain rose. 
Mona stood there with a man you see on every street in Berlin. A German policeman in the natty German police uniform. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I shall descend among you accompanied by this esteemed gentleman and read your mind through my fingertips. <laughs> I can read your innermost secrets by touching your face. So. Oh, sir, you and this girl beside you, you told your wife you were working late at the office tonight. <laughs> she worked her way up the aisle, coming closer and closer. And you, sir, my fingers reveal that you have bought an escape from KP duty. <laughs> Please, and now there's a gentleman in this row. My fingers reveal he has a medical call shoulder patch. Come on, take your hands off of me, will you? Hey, what's the matter, soldier? You afraid Mona will give away your secrets? Come on, one side, will you? Let me go. Come on, soldier, move it, will you? Go on, jump, go on. Come on, let me out of here, will you? Come on, guy, move. He's got secrets. He's got. Have you got secrets? Hey, Mona, Mona, what are you waiting for? Tell us the soldier's secrets. Come on, move, will you? Come on, everybody, you be going to run to this guy's secrets. Oh, shut up, will you? Shut up, Mona, hurry up, be careful. They held me there, laughing. The others all turned in their seats to stare. And the German cop pinned me back in the seat. And then Mona's fingers reached out and trailed across my face. Lingered. They were the fingers of death. They were cool and gentle. Almost a caress. This is the man. This is the murderer. Spring weather is hard to figure. Cool one day, summer heat the next. Those quick temperature changes are tough on you. And they can be tough on your car, too, unless it is properly protected. Don't take chances. Get Richfield All Point Safety Service now before damage is done. Get the protection that a careful All Point lubrication job from chassis to motor can give your car. In addition, Richfield All Point Service includes a safety check and proper care of all likely trouble spots, such as the battery, spark plugs, tires, and radiator. Drive into the Richfield Gasoline Dealer Station tomorrow. Save yourself time and trouble by having all the necessary spring servicing done at the same time by a man who knows how to do it right. And while you're there, ask for Richfield's informative new 32-page baseball book. It's free. Ask for your copy while the supply lasts. Escape is produced and directed by William N. Robeson. And tonight has presented Pass to Berlin by Martin Fine and David Friedkin. Featured in the cast were Stacey Harris as Sergeant Sawyer, Peggy Weber as Mona, and Ben Wright as Stanley. Special music arranged and played by Ivan Dittmars. Next week... You are lying on a small knoll in the prairie west of the Platte River... In a few moments, dawn will herald the attack of the encircling Apaches. An attack of such fury that for you, there can be no escape. Next week at this time, the Richfield Oil Corporation of New York invites you to escape with an exciting tale of the Old West. As James Warner Bella tells it in his thrilling story, Command... Be listening. Goodbye, then, until the same time next week when once again we offer you... Escape. Tom Hanlon speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.